Forward, back on YouTube, part two. Let's go for it. Plan I put forward. Endorse the plan I put forward. Which has three stages to it. The first stage is treat the hostages or the ceasefire. Second phase is a ceasefire with additional conditions. The third phase is no, the end of the war. The only one who wants the war to continue is Hamas, number one. They're the only ones standing up. We're still pushing hard from, to get them to accept. In the meantime, What's happened? In Israel, we're trying to say the only thing I've denied Israel was 2,000 pound bombs. They don't work very well in populated areas. They pull a lot of innocent people. We're providing Israel with all the weapons they need and when they need them. And by the way, I'm the guy that organized the world against Iran when they had a full blown intercontinental ballistic, ballistic missile attack on Israel. No one was hurt. No one Israeli was accidentally killed. And it just stopped. We saved Israel. We are the biggest producer of support for Israel of anyone in the world. And so that's the uh -huh. thing. Hamas cannot allow It's amazing. Joe. And our intelligence people as to how they can get Hamas like we did. What is up with Joe's eyes, man? Also, hilarious. The first thing he does is wave at an invisible audience. But you've got to be careful for what using certain weapons. Like, like literally, it, oh, real quick, I'm going to pause it. Real quick, I knew it was going to be bad because literally the first thing he does is, Hi, everybody, and they instantly say, yeah, there's no audience here. I'm like, he just waved at a fucking invisible audience. It's one thing if he waved at the camera, but he didn't. He waved to the audience. Oh, man, this is seriously elder abuse. Sorry, let me go back a little bit. I didn't hear what he said. And it's also haunting to watch of... Uh, Looking at this because, oh, given right now I'm at the Hamas thing and clearly none of this worked because those people were just, six people were just found dead, including one American citizen. So, clearly his plan worked out. Worked out. From the United Nations Security Council straight through the G7. To the Israelis and Netanyahu himself have endorsed the plan I put forward. Endorsed the plan I put forward, which has three stages to it. The first stage is treat the hostages or the ceasefire. Second phase is a ceasefire with additional conditions. The third phase is no the end of the war. The only one who wants no the end of the war. Months, number one. The only one you just said you didn't want the war to end. Pushing hard. From the All right, dial it off as dementia at this point. What's happened? Oh, and I believe it. I said the only thing I've denied Israel was 2,000 pound bombs. They don't no. work. You need Iran when they had a full blown intercontinental ballistic, ballistic missile attack on Israel. No one was hurt. One Israeli was accidentally killed. And I went too far back. In the world. We continue to send our experts and our intelligence people to how they can get Hamas like we did Bin Laden. We don't have to do it. And by the way, they've been. Greatly weakened Hamas. Greatly weakened, and they should be. They should be eliminated. But you've got to be careful for what using certain weapons among population centers. Just going back to Ukraine for one second. We have an ocean separating us. The European nations together have spent a hundred. Well, one thing about this is that it's, it's easy to follow Trump, Trump stuff because there's a lot of the stuff on like there. I did with NATO. I got oh my God. Hundreds of billions of dollars. The Secretary General of NATO. Oh my God! It's Nick Cage from the Massive Weight of American Tal when he's tripping on acid. Business. We were spending almost a hundred percent of the money was it was paid by us. He didn't do that. He's getting all. You got to ask these people to put up the money. We're over a hundred billion dollars more spent, and it has a bigger impact on them. Because we actually hit the debt ceiling. Did people forget that? Exactly. You got to ask them. As far as Israel and and Hamas, Israel's the one that wants to go. He said the only one that wants to keep going is Hamas. Actually, Israel is the one, and you should let him go and let him finish the job. He doesn't want to do it. He's become like a Palestinian. But they don't like him because he's a very bad Palestinian. He's a weak one. President Biden, you have a minute? I've never heard so much foolishness. This is a guy who wants to get out of NATO. Are you going to stay in NATO? He's going to pull out of NATO. The idea that we have our strength life in our life. <laughs> I love it's like, it's like, maybe. There may be a big it doesn't benefit us. Benefit Fuck them. A major war in Europe, a major war in Europe. What happens if, in fact, you have...
couldn't continue to go into, into NATO. We have an Article 5 agreement. Attack on one is attack on all. If you want to start the nuclear war he keeps talking about, go ahead. Let Putin go in and control Ukraine. <coughs> and but and other places. It's just what happens then. He has no idea what the hell he's talking about. And by the way, I got 50 other nations around the world. Yeah, yeah let's see how long NATO lasts without the Amer without the USA. That this was this, this it's a negotiation tactic, dumbass. To the whole world peace. No, no major war in Europe has ever been able to contain just Europe. That's, That's why NATO needs us, you idiot. Would you support the creation of an independent Palestinian state? NATO, NATO needs NATO us more than we need them, to be perfectly honest. We do that, the problem we have is that we spend all the money. So they kill us on trade. I made great trade deals with the European nations. Because if you add them up, they're about the same size economically. Their economy is about the same size as the United States. And they were written no cars, no, they don't want anything that we have. But we're supposed to take their cars, their food, their everything, their agriculture. I changed that. But the big thing I changed is they don't want to pay. And the only reason that he can play games with NATO is because I got them to put up hundreds of billions of dollars. I Hold said, and he's right about this. I said, no. I'm not going to support NATO if you don't pay. They asked me that question. Would you guard us against Russia at a very secret meeting of the 28 uh, states at that time, uh, nations at that time? And they said, no, if you don't pay, I won't do that. And you know what happened? Billions and billions of dollars came flowing in the next day and the next months. But now we're in the same position. We're paying everybody's bills. Let's turn to the issue of democracy. <laughs> President Trump. Uh, I want to ask you about January 6, 2021. After oh, God, this session, fucking thing. Some of them stormed the Capitol to stop the constitutionally mandated counting of electoral votes. As president, you swore an oath to, quote, preserve, protect, and defend, unquote, the Constitution. What do you say to voters who believe that you violated that oath through your actions and inaction on January 6 and worry that you'll do it again? Well, I don't think too many believe that. And let me tell you about January 6. On January 6. We had a great border, nobody coming through, very few. On January 6th, we were energy independent. On January 6th, we had the lowest taxes ever. We had the lowest regulations ever. On January 6th, we were respected all over the world. All over the world, we were respected. And then he comes in, and we're now laughed at. We're like a bunch of stupid people. That what happened to the United States' reputation under this man's leadership is horrible including weaponization, which I'm sure at some point you'll be talking about, when mm -hmm. he goes after his political opponent because he can't beat him fair and square. You have 80 seconds left. My question was, what do you say to those voters who believe that you violated your constitutional oath through your actions and inaction on January 6, 2021, and worry that you'll do it again? Well, I didn't say that to anybody. I said peacefully and patriotically. And Nancy Pelosi, if you which know, they are allowed to do from two days ago, on tape to her daughter, who is a documentary filmmaker, as they say. Filmmaker. But she's saying, oh, no, it's my responsibility. I was responsible for this. Because I offered her 10,000 soldiers or National Guard, and she turned them down. And the mayor of, in writing, by the way, the mayor, in writing, turned it down. The mayor of, of D.C. They turned it down. I offered 10,000 because I could see. I had virtually nothing to do. They asked me to go make a speech. I could see what was happening. Everybody was saying they're going to be there on January 6th. They're going to be there. And I said, you know what? There's a lot of people coming. You could feel it. You could feel it, too, and you could feel it. And I said, they ought to have some National Guard or whatever. And I offered it to her. And she now admits that she turned it down. And it was the same day she was, I don't know, she can't be very happy with her daughter because it made her into a liar. She said, I take full responsibility for January 6th. President Biden. Look, he encouraged those folks to go up and cap Oh, shit, there. sorry. I, sat in the I like to do research while watching this just to confirm things, things that they're saying are true. Three hours watching. Doing my own life that check. By his vice president and a number of his colleagues on the Republican side as well to do something, to call for a stop, to end it. Instead, he talked, they talked about the people being patriots and, and, and great patriots of America. In fact, he says he'll now forgive them for what they've done. You know, They've been convicted. He says he wants to commute their sentences and say that, that no. He went to every single court in the nation. I don't know how many cases, scores of cases, including the Supreme Court. And they said, they said, no, no. 
this guy, this guy is responsible for doing what is being that was done. He did do a damn thing, and these people should be in jail, and they should be the ones who are being held accountable. And he wants to let them all out, and now he says that he loses again, such a whiner that he is, that there could be a bloodbath. Thank you, President Biden. President Trump? What they've done to some people that are so innocent, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. What you have done, how you've destroyed the lives of so many people. When they rip down Portland, when they rip down uh, many other cities, you go to Minnesota, Minneapolis, what they've done there with the fires all over the city. If I didn't bring in the National Guard, that city would have been destroyed. When you look at all of the... They took over big chunks of Seattle. I was all set to bring in the National Guard. They heard that. They saw them coming, and they left immediately. What he said about this whole subject is so off. Peacefully patriotic. One other thing. The unselect committee, which is basically two horrible Republicans that are all gone now out of office, and Democrats, all Democrats, they destroyed and deleted all of the information they found because they found out we were right. We were right, and they deleted and destroyed all of the information. They should go to jail for that. If a Republican did that, they'd go to Thank jail. Thank you, President Trump. President Biden, I want to give you a minute. The only person on this stage is a convicted felon is the man I'm looking at right now. He's <laughs> like, yeah, boy. He is, he's, what he's, telling he's, he's like, yeah, I am. The fact is that Fuck there was no effort on his part to stop what was going on up in Capitol Hill. And all yeah, I just saw that he did offer those. Concerned over deaths turn them over statues. The idea that those people are patriots? Come on. When I asked them the first of two debates we had, the debates we had the first time around, I said, will you denounce the Proud Boy? He said, no, I'll tell them to stand by. The idea he's refusing to, will you denounce these guys? Will you denounce the people we're talking about now? Will you denounce the people who attacked that captain? What are you going to do? I'm gonna uh, give you a, a, a minute. The mic's off, dude. Have, um, oh my God! He forgot the mics are off. Last month, you said if reelected, you would quote have every right to go after unquote your political opponents. You just talked about members of the select committee on January 6th going to jail. Your main political opponent is standing on stage with you tonight. Can you clarify exactly what it means about you feeling you have every right to go after your political opponents? Well, I said my retribution is going to be success. We're going to make this country successful again, because right now it's a failing nation. My retribution is going to be success. But when he talks about a convicted felon, his son is a convicted felon at a very high level. His son is convicted, going to be convicted probably numerous other times. Should have been convicted before, but his Justice Department let the statute of limitations laps on the most important thing. But he could be a convicted felon as soon as he gets out of office. Joe could be a convicted felon with all of the things that he's done. He's done horrible things. All of the death <coughs> <things. What coughs> Telling the Ukrainian people that we're going to want a billion dollars or you change the prosecutor, otherwise you're not getting a billion dollars. If I ever said that, that's quid pro quo. That we're not going to do anything. We're not going to give you a billion dollars unless you change your prosecutor having to do with the son. This man is a criminal. This man, you're lucky. You're lucky. I did nothing wrong. We'd have a system that was rigged and disgusting. I did nothing wrong. Thank you, President. I mean, I've been researching a lot of stuff. And, I mean, Zuckerberg. I'll give you a minute to respond. The idea that I did anything wrong relative to what you're talking about is outrageous. It's simply a lie, number one. Zuckerberg literally admitted that you pressured them, dude. Granted, this was before that, but still. Is wrong. It's simply wrong. No president's ever spoken like that before. No president in our history has spoken like that before. Number three. And that's why he won. crimes that you are still charged with? And think of all the civil penalties you have. How many billions of dollars do you owe in civil penalties for, for molesting a woman in public, for doing a whole range of things, of having sex with a porn star on the night while your wife is pregnant. I mean, what are you talking about? You, you, you're the moral for an alligator. You're the answer. I didn't have sex with a porn star, number one. Number two, that was a case that was started and moved. They moved a high-ranking official, a DOJ, into the Manhattan DA's office to start that case. That case is going to be appealed and won. We had a very uh -huh. a terrible judge, a horrible judge, Democrat, the <laughs> prosecutor were all high-ranking Democrats, appointed people, and the, both the civil 
and a criminal. He basically went after his political opponent because he thought it was going to damage me. But when the public found out about these cases, because they understand it better than he does, he has no idea what these cases are. I don't even think he knows where he is half the time. Cases. You know what they did? My poll numbers went up way up. You know that because you're reporting it. And we took in more money in the last two weeks than we've ever taken in, in the history of, of any campaign. I don't think any campaign has ever taken. Hundreds of millions of dollars came pouring in because the public knows it's a scam and it's a guy that's after his political opponent because he can't win fair and square. Thank you, President Trump. President Biden, you have said, quote, Donald Trump and his MAGA Republicans are determined to destroy American democracy. Do you believe that the tens of millions of Americans who are likely to vote for President Trump will be voting against American democracy? The more they know about what he's done, yes. The more they know about what he's done. And there's a lot more coming. He's got a lot of cases around the road coming around. He got, he got you know, it's ironic that you talk about democracy when you keep on talking about Roe v. Wade being turned over, where it's something that's voted by the states now and no longer has control by the federal government, a.k.a. it's now in the hands of the people, like Trump said. That's democracy. What got me involved around the first place after my son died, I decided in Iraq, because of Iraq, I said I wasn't going to lie to you. Until I saw what happened in Charlottesville, Virginia. People coming out of the woods carrying swastikas on torches, torches, and, and singing the same anti Semitic file they sang when, when back in Germany. And, what the, and the young woman got killed. I spoke to the mother, and she, they asked him, they said, what, what, what do you think of those people? The people who, the ones that one tried to stop it, and the ones who said, I think they're fine people on both sides. What American president would ever say? Nazis coming out of fields, carrying torches, seeing the same as the fine people. This is the guy who says Hitler's done some good things. I'd like to know what they are. Good things Hitler's done, that's what he said. This guy has no sense of American democracy. Keep in mind, Hitler loved his people. They were a powerful nation. They did get powerful. People like to downplay Hitler, but the dude did have some good ideas, and his nation was thriving until he decided to waste it more on his army instead of nukes, which he ended up abandoning, wasting a shit ton of money. The worst president, the worst presidency in the history of our country. We shouldn't be having a debate about it. There's nothing to debate. He made <coughs> this story, and you'll see it's debunked all over the place. Every anchor has, deb every reasonable anchor has debunked it. And just the other day, it came out where it was fully debunked. It's a nonsense story. He knows that, and he didn't run because of Charlottesville. He used that as an excuse to run. President Biden, debunked. It happened. All you have to do is listen to what was said at the time. And the idea that somehow that's... Listen to what we said at the time. Because I was worried a guy like this guy could get elected. If he thought they were good people coming out of that forest, carrying those, those woods, carrying those torches, then he didn't deserve to be president. Didn't deserve to be president at all. And the idea that he's talking about all this being fabricated, we saw it our own eyes. We saw what happened on January 6th. We saw the people breaking through the windows. We saw people occupying their... His own vice president. Look, there's a reason why 40 of his 44 top cabinet officers refused to endorse him this time. His vice president hasn't endorsed yeah. him. Yeah, I think I know why. Why? Why? They know him well. They serve with him. Why, why, why would lifelong, lifelong politicians not, not represent a guy? What? Okay, here's the thing, Biden. What? Most of his cabinet members at the time were lifelong Republicans. So, like, I can kind of understand. They've been in government for a very long time. They're probably corrupt politicians. A good chunk of them made most of their money strictly through politics. So, like I said, I notice a total shift between them. It seems more like the radicals are on the left, liberals... Democratic side, but it is what it is, so. Oh, well. Break. Okay, let's. To a record low on All right, let's get back to it. Welcome back to the CNN presidential debate. All right, let's see his excuse this time. Let's talk about persistent challenges you both faced in your first terms, and you'd certainly face again in the second term. 
President Biden, while black unemployment dropped to a record low under your presidency, black families still earn far less than white families. Black mothers are still three times more likely to die from pregnancy-related causes, and black Americans are imprisoned at five times the rate of white Americans. What do you say to black voters who are disappointed that you haven't made more progress? Let's see how he blames Trump. The fact of the matter is that more small black businesses that have been started in any time in history. Number that two, are going bankrupt, black, dude. Black unemployment is the lowest level it's been in a long, long time. Number three, we find we're trying to provide housing for black Americans and dealing with the segregation that exists among these corporate these corporations that collude to keep uh, people out of their houses. And in, in addition to that, we find that the impact of on the Hunter. the choice that black families have to make relative to child care is incredibly difficult. When we did the first major piece of legislation in the past, I was able to reduce black child care costs. I cut them in half. In half. We've got to make sure we have We've got to make sure we have child care protection. We're increasing the in America we think there's more people coming in the, in the job market. So there's more to be done, considerably more to be done. But we've done a great deal so far. I'm not letting up and they know it. You have 49 seconds left. What do you say to black voters who are disappointed with the progress so far? I say I don't blame you for being disappointed. Inflation is still hurting you badly. For example, I provided for the idea that any black family, first time home buyer, should get a $10,000 tax credit to be able to buy their first home. I love how he just. And get started. I love how he just started off saying, like, oh, yeah, it's been an absolute success. I've done a lot for him. Oh, I don't blame him for being disappointed. That if they were engaged in nursing, anything having to do with volunteerism, if they paid their bills for 10 years and their student debt, all the rest was forgiven after 10 years. Millions have benefited from that. And we're going to do a whole lot for black families. Thank you, President Trump. And he caused the inflation. He's blaming inflation, and he's right. He's been very bad. He caused the inflation, and it's killing black families and Hispanic families and just about everybody. It's killing people. They can't buy groceries anymore. They can't. You look at the cost of food where it's doubled and tripled and quadrupled. They can't live. They're not living anymore. He caused this inflation. I gave him a country with no, essentially no inflation. It was perfect. It was so good. All he had to do was leave it alone. He destroyed it with his Green New Scam and all of the other, all this money that Sorry. he had thrown out the window. He caused inflation. As sure as you're sitting there, the fact is that his big kill on the black people is the millions of people that he's allowed to come in through the border. They're taking black jobs now. And it could be 18, it could be 19, and even 20 million people. They're taking black jobs, and they're taking Hispanic jobs, and you haven't seen it yet, but you're going to see something that's going to be the worst in our history. Thank you. President Biden? There was no inflation when I became president. You know why? The economy was flat on its back. 50% unemployment. He decimated the economy. That's that what was... Decimated the economy. That's why there was no inflation at the time. We're no jobs. That was COVID due to the mandates that you guys forced on him. Like, you can't really blame him for that. The DACA has increased and made sure that there's $8,000 per person in a family to get written off from health care. But this guy wants to eliminate that. They've tried 50 times. He wants to get rid of the ACA again. And they're going to try again if they win. We find ourselves in a position where the idea that we're not doing any, I put more, we put more police on the street than any administration has. He wants to cut the cops. We're providing for equity, equity and making sure people have a shot to make it. There's a lot going on. And in inflation, he caused it by his tremendous amount of feasance and the way he handled the pandemic. Thank you. Another persistent challenge is the climate crisis. 2023 was the hottest year in recorded history, and communities across the country are confronting the devastating effects of extreme heat, intensifying wildfires, stronger hurricanes, and rising sea levels. Former President Trump, you've vowed to end your opponent's 
climate initiatives, but will you take any action as president to slow the climate crisis? Let me just go back. Please. Plant more trees and stuff. Please. How close the police are here. Almost every police group in the nation from every state is supporting Donald J. Trump. Almost every police group. Yeah, yeah actually, that's true. Black population is horrible, including the fact that for 10 years he called them super predators. We can't, in the 1990s, we can't forget that. Super predators was his name, and he called it to them, and they've taken great offense at it, and now they see it happening. But when they see what I did for criminal justice reform and for the historically black uh, colleges and universities where I funded them and got them all funded, and the uh, Opportunity Zones with, with Tim, as you know, Tim Scott was incredible. He did a great job, great senator from South Carolina. He came to me with the idea, and it was a great idea. It's one of the most successful economic development acts ever in the country, Opportunity Zones. And the yeah. biggest beneficiary are blacks, and that's why we have the best numbers with them in maybe ever. They're saying ever. I read this morning, wherever, the best numbers. He's lost much of the black population because he's done a horrible job for black people. He's also done a horrible job for Hispanics. But when you see these millions of people pouring into our country and they're going to take the jobs and it's already started and you haven't seen anything yet, it's a disaster. You have 38 seconds left. To president Trump, will you take any action as president to slow the climate crisis? So I want absolutely immaculate clean water and I want absolutely clean air, and we had it. We had H2O. We had the best numbers ever, and we did. We were using all forms of energy, all forms, everything. And yet, during my four years, I had the best environmental numbers ever. And my top environmental people gave me that statistic just before I walked on the stage, actually. I don't know where the hell he's been. The idea. Then he said it's true. <clears throat> I passed the most extensive, the most extensive climate change legislation in history. In history. <coughs> By the way, black colleges. I, I came up with $15 billion for HBCUs, historic black universities and colleges, because they don't have the, they don't have the kind of contributors that they have to build these laboratories and the like. Any black student is capable in college of doing any white student can do. He doesn't have the money, but now he'll be able to get those jobs in high tech. We're in a situation where the idea that he is kind of claiming to have done something that had cleanest water, cleanest water, he hadn't done a damn thing in the environment. He pulled out of the Paris Peace Accord, the uh, Climate Accord. I immediately joined it. Because if we reach 1.5 degrees Celsius, and then he went, well, there's no way back. The only existential threat to humanity is climate change. And he didn't do a damn thing about it. He must undo all that I've done. The, then explain how shit has gotten worse. Billion dollars, and China nothing, and Russia nothing, and India nothing. It was a ripoff of the United States. And I ended it because I didn't want to waste that money because they treat us horribly. We were the only ones who was costing us money. Nobody else was paying into it. And it was a, it was a disaster. But everything that he said just now, I'll give you an example. I heard him say before, insulin. I'm the one that got the insulin down for the seniors. Well, he did! Seniors. I and remember that! He was destroying all of our medical programs because the migrants coming in, they want everybody. And look, I have the, I have the biggest heart on the stage, I guarantee you that. And I want to take care of people. But we're destroying our country. They're taking over our schools, our hospitals, and they're going to be taking over Social Security. He is destroying Social Security, Medicare, and Medicaid. You know, taxes keep increasing. Where's all my money going? We, in fact, we were the only ones of consequence. We're not. We're not members of, of the Paris Accord. How can we do anything if we're not able to? The United States can't get us in control. One of the largest polluters in the world, number one. We're making significant progress by 20 You're lying! We have cut half. We have made, we have made significant progress. <laughs> that is honestly a lie! Oh, China's way worse than us. Peace Corps, and we're going to we're moving in directions that are going to significantly change. A lot of Asian countries are a lot worse than us when it comes down to factory work and climate change environments. Really concerned about about pollution and about climate. I've not seen any indication of that. And by the way, with regard to prescription drugs, 
one company agreed that they would reduce the price to $35, which I was calling for one voluntarily. I made sure every company in the world, every pharmaceutical company, cannot have to pay. Thank you. And by the way, after, after you took away Trump's bill. bill. Every day, millions of Americans struggle just to make ends um. meet. For many older Americans, Social Security provides a critical lifeline. You Social think about same-sex marriage? Nothing is done to Social Security. It's a sin. Seniors you think it's a sin? So you think it I'm sinful? In just over What's ten that? Years. You think I'm sin well, you sinful because I'm married to a man? Yeah. You're you do. To take to yes, you're Social sinning. You are in a sinful relationship. Yes, I don't believe. I actually don't believe marriage can be sure. between two men. Right so I don't. Everybody. You think about hundred seventy thousand dollars to six percent of their income of their paycheck every single time they get a paycheck. I'm the first one they get from eighteen years old. The idea that they're gonna. I'm not either proposing that everybody, they pay, the millionaires pay 1%, 1%. So no one after, I, I do not raise the cost of Social Security for anybody under $400,000. After that, I began to make the wealthy, began to pay their fair share by increasing from 1% beyond to be able to guarantee the program for life. So you still have 82 seconds left. Are there any other measures that you think that would be able to help uh, keep Social Security solvent, or is just is that one enough? Well, no, that, that one enough will keep it solvent. But the biggest thing we'll do is we defeat this man because he wants to get rid of Social Security. He thinks there's plenty to cut in Social Security. We want to cut Social Security and Medicare both times. And, and if you look at the, pro the program put forward by the House Republican Caucus that he uh, supports, is in fact want to cut it as well. The idea that we don't need to protect our seniors is ridiculous. <laughs> By the way, no, they're clearly not protecting you, Joe. Care coverage today than ever before. And on the AC, as I said, we're in a circumstance where 400,000 people, or, I mean, 40 million people, would not have insurance because they have a pre-existing condition. Only allows them to have that insurance is the fact that they, in fact, are part of the ACA. And by the way, the other thing is, we're in a situation where I talk about education for black communities. I've raised the number, the amount of money for Pell Grants, another $8,000. So anybody making under $70,000 a year can be able to get $15,000 towards the tuition. Do you know how fucking expensive Pell Grants are on the interest, though? I've been with politicians all my life. I've been on this side of the equation for the last eight years. Uh, I've never seen anybody lie like this guy. He lies. I've never seen him. He can look you in the face. So, about so many other things, too. And we mentioned the laptop. We mentioned Russia, 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 Ukraine, Ukraine, Ukraine. And everything he does is a lie. It's misinformation and disinformation. Uh, the losers and suckers story that he made up is a total lie on the military. It's a disgrace. But Social Security, he's destroying it. Because millions of people are pouring into our country, and they're putting them onto Social Security, they're putting them onto Medicare, Medicaid, they're putting them in our hospitals, they're taking the place of our citizens there. What they're doing to the VA, to our veterans, is unbelievable. Our veterans are living in the street, and these people are living in luxury hotels. He doesn't know what he's doing, and it, it's really coming back. I've never seen such anger in our country before. President Biden? The idea of veterans are not being taken care of, I told you before. By the way, when I said suckers and losers, he said he acknowledged after that he fired that general. That general got fired because mm -hmm. no one has acknowledged that that's what he said. He was the one standing with Trump when he said it, number one. Number two, one person. That we're going to be in a situation where all these millions and millions of great talks about it, illegal aliens are coming into the country and taking away our jobs. There's a reason why we have the fastest growing economy in the world. The reason why we have the most successful economy in the world. We're doing better than any other nation in the world. And by the way, those 15 Nobel laureates you talked about being phony, those 15 Nobel laureates, economists, they all said that if Trump is re-elected, we'd like to have a recession and, and inflation is going to increase as well. And by the way, the worst president in history, 159 presidential scholars voted to him the worst President in the history of the United States of America. President Biden, thank you so much. Let's turn to the cost of child care, which many American families struggle to afford. President Trump, both you and President Biden. All right, give me a moment here. All right, back up. They all said that I just love the look I trust. It's like, mm-hmm. Yeah, keep telling your lie. 
And by the way, worst president in history, 159 presidential scholars voted to him the worst. 159? President Biden, thank you so much. 159, what happened to, I mean, I feel like there's going to be a lot more presidential scholars. Like, a lot more, so, I don't know. Alright, give me one moment here.